All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome to another great episode on your favorite political talk show, The Truth with Ben Jokes. Now, hardship in Nigeria continues to bite harder and it shows no signs of slowing down. The Farmers Association of various states have all stated that the signs are not good. From insecurity to high cost of production to drought, these farmers have told Nigerians to expect tougher times as regards food inflation because the volume of food produced this year is or will be far less than what was produced last year. I already stated the factors leading to this. But in all these, we are yet to see any concrete move by governments to fix the problem of insecurity. And on the issue of rise in the cost of production, the government had said, look, Nigerians are experiencing all these, you know, inflation because of fuel subsidy removal. They said the increase in the price of fuel is the reason why the cost of production for every sector is so high that when our refineries start working, fuel will crash to 100 naira per liter and Nigerians will begin to enjoy. Some of us had our doubts because we know that these people cannot be trusted to take critical decisions that will affect Nigerians. They will not be able to reverse those situations. This is the same government that was warned not to float the naira, but they told Nigerians that it would only take three months and the naira would stabilize against the dollar. It was 700 naira to a dollar before the floating. They said floating will take it to 1,000 naira to a dollar, but it will be back to about 400 naira to a dollar after three months. Today, after 12 months of floating, it is 1,592 naira to a dollar. So, we said these people cannot be trusted. We warned, but some Nigerians called us names. Now, a few hours ago, the government, in its usual deceptive fashion, confirmed a suspicion that we have had since last year and Nigerians went crazy. APC supporters gathered to cry over that announcement by the agents of government. Before I show you that announcement and how Nigerians reacted, let me quickly show you this video. And then when we come back, I will ask the Nigerian police force a very big question. Watch this video. Contrary to what the NSO is saying, we are not indicting the NSC, but we have certain information that we wouldn't want NSC to come close to us. Let us investigate this man. Let us get to the root of this matter. Let us forget about they went to our secretariat, they went to do this. We have powers to bust anywhere we want to bust. Once we know that criminals are hiding here or there are certain criminal uh, items in a particular place, the powers, the powers are there for us. And we didn't do, we didn't do it alone. Mm. Police operatives were not there alone. It was a joint operation and well coordinated. So we, we, we are inviting the, the, we are inviting for... the leadership of NLC mm -hmm. to even come forward. By the time they know what we have, the information we have at our chill, NLC will not indict the police again. They will not indict the government. They would rather come here to say, Nigerians, the whole world, we are looking for Mr. So, 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 and so, 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 with what we have on ground. So... Uh, a big lesson here. Although I like to correct the notion that the police can bust anywhere in Nigeria, that's not exactly the right picture of the law. Uh, if you have uh, a strong, suspicious information enough to bust, so Nigerians will not think that anytime the policeman uh, puts his uh, shoes against any door, he can bring it down. So that there won't be fears that the police is. Joe, 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 you are a lawyer, you are a journalist. But here in this context, you are a journalist. <laughs> don't but be, can, don't let us be the issue of lawyers. The law. and police to this. We can speak about the law. And what the we law are speaking says. about the law. The that, man, the man, the law says that you, can, you have power of ingress. You know, you agree with us. Yes, I agree with you. The power of ingress that the teams can, can but be it's led not by, by an ASP. Once it's an ASP, he expected as a commissioned officer to know whether it's right for me to bust into this place or not, before you even bust. Now, that was the public relations officer of the Nigerian police, ACP Olumu Iwade Jobi, and he was debating there with Sheung the right of the police to break into any building if they have strong suspicion that a suspected criminal or criminal goods are in the building. And of course, this is coming after officers of the Nigerian police force broke into buildings in the NLC headquarters in Abuja, claiming they got a strong intel. Now, my question is this. The day the Nigerian police and even other security agents 
surrounded the house of former governor of Kogi State, Yayabelo, in Abuja. What were they waiting for? They said the law allows them to break into any building if they have strong intel that a suspect is there. Why did they not break into that building? The Belo we are talking about here is a strong suspect with overwhelming evidence against him from the EFCC chairman and you clearly knew he was in there. Why didn't you break in? Eh? Nigerian police. Because the law only works for the common man, right? This is a shame. And the funny thing is that we know all these things. These things are not new to us. But when you come and sit down on air, you'll be talking as if we are strangers in our own country. Big criminals have police escorts while innocent Nigerians rot in jail. But this will not continue forever. One day, Nigerians will wake up and you guys will all be paid in full. Now, let us look at that announcement by agents of government masquerading under the term marketers. The government told Nigerians that subsidy had to be removed, that we should focus on our own refineries, and that after Dangote refinery starts rolling out petrol, petrol will sell at 100 naira to 200 naira per liter. But after shifting the date of commencement of production of the Dangote refinery like 10 times, the government and Dangote masquerading as oil marketers have now come out to confirm to us that even with local refineries, we will not buy cheap petrol in Nigeria. Look at how the papers reported it. Petrol may sell for 600 naira per liter with Dangote refinery marketers. Nigeria's oil marketers have said that Dangote refinery may crash the price of petrol to between 600 naira to 650 naira per liter depending on its production cost. Let me pause here a little and explain something. For the past three months, they have been deliberately making us buy petrol at between 800 naira to 1,300 naira. Not even the 615 naira that it was when they initially removed the subsidy. Now, Dangote is set to start rolling out crude oil. They will now return the price to what it was when they initially removed subsidy. That is the trick. They will now call it crashing, as if the initial agreement was not to crash it down from 615 to 200. Let's continue. The National Vice President of the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, Hamid Fashola, disclosed this in a statement on Monday. His comment comes amid indications that the $20 billion refinery will no longer commence fuel production in mid-August 2024, contrary to the president of Dangote Group's Aliko Dangote's earlier projection. Speaking on the development, Fashola said, crude oil supply crisis remains a major problem for the Lagos-based refinery. According to him, the official petrol price from the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited stood at 570 naira per litre, while private depot sell at 700 naira per litre. He, however, stressed that when Dangote's fuel comes on board, the pump price may crash to 600 naira or 650 naira per litre. The official price for NMPC is around 570 naira per litre, but the third parties, the private depots, sell PMS to most of our members at 700 naira and above, plus or minus. We hope Dangote can sell between 600 naira and 650 naira per litre. 600 naira is still okay. However, it depends on the cost of the production from Dangote's end, he said. How did we get here? From 195 naira, we were paying subsidy. You said you have removed subsidy and it has gone to 615 naira per litre. And you told us that when refineries start rolling out crude, it's going to come down to 150, 200 naira and Nigerians will start enjoying. Now you mean to tell us that with local refineries in this country, we will still buy petrol at 600 to 650 naira per litre. And look at how Nigerians react. Let's take some of the tweet reactions. And I'll start with tweets from these wailing APC supporters. Let's enjoy their tears. This tweet here by Honorable Real One says, If this is the case, then the Dangote refinery is not for the masses. Anything above 180 naira is a no-no. Oh, now you know that it's not for the masses. 
and this video by comrade isa muhammad says fg should stop enslaving nigerians okay okay go and tell them you are you are, you are their supporter go and meet them and this tweet by abdul mumini mustafa says i know it will not be at low price as i expected because they didn't sell the crude oil to him at low price why can't the nmpcl give him the crude in low price and let him sell to nigerians in low price oh low price you are asking for low price you don't know you will see shege and this tweet by abdullahi sani says a typical lie it can go down beyond the said amount once the oil mafias were not involved allow the refinery to thrive for god's sake let the masses breathe supply the crude oil directly to the refinery without any middleman now the deal is naira to naira when peter obi was saying all these during the campaign some of you were saying muslim muslim ticket some of you were saying Igbo cannot be president some you were saying all manner of rubbish now you are facing the reality of governance and olu here says let dangote determine the price why speak for him sit down there <laughs> you don't know that this is dangote and federal government masquerading as oil marketers and aliyu here says both dangote and federal government are scammers that is it aliyu knows the deal he understands what is happening they will do all these things make money for themselves and blame everything on faceless marketers it is oil marketers that are destroying nigeria it is oil marketers that are eating subsidy money it's only a few people that are where are these few people so there are some few nigerians that are making the entire country to suffer and we cannot go and pick them up this is what they had been telling Nigerians, that refinery, refineries are the solutions to our problem. Let us get refineries. Now, these people are telling us that even with refineries, the corrupt system will not allow the masses to breathe. This is shocking. But not to me. Not to me at all. Because I know that this is the APC and I'm never disappointed whenever they do things like this because I don't expect anything good from them. And of course, you can trust obedience. Obedience came into the comment section and began to mock APC supporters as they were wailing up and down. How sweet it is that everything we said to them last year is now unfolding before their very eyes. There is no sweeter thing than this. And that is why sometimes it looks as if we are celebrating, you know, evil. No, we are not. We are not celebrating evil. We actually tried our best to avert this, but we couldn't unite as a people to do the right thing. I keep saying it. I know that politicians used their influence, they used their money and all that. But if Nigerians had united or if Nigerians can unite, there is no force that is bigger than the collective force of the people. And that is the step that Nigerians must take subsequently to get their country back. But until then, make I still enter town. <laughs> make I go get some Ubonga political news. We will not go like. Why? Because now, because of now. Now I day here. So don't go. <laughs>